All right. Uh, what? Well, oh my! Uh, Secretary Clinton. Secretary Clinton is coming to the room. Uh, hold on, I'm going to give my mic to uh, Secretary Clinton. Uh, Secretary Clinton, what do you have to say after uh, Tuesday's offense? I may not be David Carradine, <laughs> but I fucking choke. <laughs> I may not be Johnny Knoxville, but I ate shit <laughs> on live TV. <laughs> I said, I may not be... Dale Earnhardt but I smashed into the fucking wall because I couldn't turn left Um, it's us guys, we're back. Uh, hello darkness, my old friends. We've come to talk to you again. Uh, you know what it is. Uh, Chapo Trap House, joined by Virgil Texas. Hi everyone. And we're here to talk about the life and career of Leonard Cohen, one of the greatest songwriters of our time. And now he's gone, and we all feel bad about yeah. it. When I was a kid, he taught me it was okay to be weird. <laughs> yeah. Leonard Leonard Cohn taught me that like if you see somebody you should put on a safety pin on your lapel <laughs> and he taught me it's okay to have an open marriage. No, this is uh this is the first time that we are talking to each other or even looking at ourselves since uh, Tuesday night's uh, election well, live we're, show. We're not looking at each other. If no, you remember the true. New Yorker profile of the dig cast, that's with, with no eye contact strictly. <laughs> um, no, we're we're in the same room and I think, you know, before we go any further, I just, I, for my own, you know, psychic balm, just to exercise these ghosts, uh, I just need to say right off the bat, uh, we were wrong. Uh, we blew it. Uh, yeah. As If you were at the live show or listened to the uh, audio of the live show, uh, you know, you saw uh, a show and party. It was great. But it turned out more like the New Year's Eve scene in Boogie Nights. Than, <laughs> um, and we're all now in 1980, you know? And more than anything, I just got to say, Bill Mitchell is now all of our dads. We're recording this Thank from God. his house. I, I needed one. He's, I needed he, a new we, dad. He gives us an allowance now. Uh, Bill Mitchell was right. Uh, we were wrong. Um, like, you know, uh, we had to change the ending of the show because honestly, uh, none of us could conceive of Trump actually winning the election. Donald Trump and his advisors couldn't even conceive of him winning the election. The intelligence community couldn't conceive of it. The markets couldn't conceive of it. Bookies couldn't conceive of it. We were all under the same incantation. And we we probably should have seen the writing on the wall in a few spaces. I mean, I remember before we put together our map, I saw this thing in Florida from Elsie Hastings, a U.S. rep, who said... The Clinton campaign hadn't even tried to reach out to the black community. He was saying this before voting day, like three days before voting day. And I was like, wow, this is a really bad sign. And but of course, like all the liberal li- liberal media people were like, uh, we registered 80 million new voters in Florida. Yeah. And it was like they were Bill Mitchell. They, they were, were the they ridiculous were <laughs> Yeah. Well, we yeah. saw, you know, I mean, looking at it uh, analytically, we saw, you know, there was like 90 percent uh, black turnout in North Carolina in terms of early voting. And the assumption that we made was like, oh, she can kind of sweat that. We know it's not really going to be 2012 numbers and Latinos kind of pick up the pick up the uh, pace there. What we didn't really realize was exactly how bad her ground game was. And we kind of presumed that we would have heard in the last couple of weeks some kind of. Uh, some kind of uh, uh, subjective, uh, you know, warning sign. It would have been like anonymous, like door walker in Wisconsin's like, this is going to shit. And what it turned out was uh, her ground game was localized in just these big cities where people were not that enthusiastic about her. How many campaign offices in Pennsylvania? I don't even want to think about how many, but all of them, all of them in uh, Philadelphia or Pittsburgh, none in these rural areas at all. 
you know, and and uh, if you listen back to the the shows throughout this entire election, like this is something that I personally have waffled back and forth on whether I thought Trump could really be president. But in the end, at the end of the day, my rational mind, like in collaboration with, you know, the same fucking stupid media and the polls and all the right sources and sensible people yeah. conspired with my rational mind to be like, you know what? Like at the end of the day, like I couldn't conceive of President Trump as anything other than a joke until it wasn't a joke. And we were like right on stage when it happened. And I feel like I read from H.P. Lovecraft on stage and I like said the words that like opened up the membrane into the dark universe. And that's where we're living now. We all live in this yeah, zone. This really now. does feel like one of Nyarlathotep's schemes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's got and Nyarlathotep has a sense of humor about things. <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say I'm proud of all the boys for uh, holding together on stage even as we ate shit on our plan for the I show. Had, it I, just, I it, had diarrhea. Yeah, and I yeah. I was just feeling so, so like I got to go. Uh, <laughs> my I like my bladder was, you know, I had to piss. I'm a like frequent pisser, but I'm a I, diarrhea boy. Yeah, he's Virgil, Virgil's a diarrhea boy. I know it from working with him. He will always be a diarrhea boy. That's what I like about him. I promise you that for these next four years, I will still have IBS. Yeah. Here's <laughs> here's the message to you, people. To stand up to President Trump, Virgil will have twice the amount of diarrhea. <laughs> the the sun will rise in the morning, and I will go into the subway and be really sweaty and worried that it breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm proud of the boys though that like we held together against our diarrhea against their entire plan fucking up and that just shows how powerful being spectrum is yeah because like you don't you actually everything nothing actually emotionally affects you except for when people are like oh i think you know, diesel and steam are the same thing and you're like you fucking piece of shit i cannot believe what has happened to our country but people kept coming yeah. up to me after the show and saying like hey you guys did great considering the circumstances and i'm like uh what happened what the <laughs> <laughs> shit? Way at the bar because i thought things went perfectly fine we read our lines yeah uh little little insider info on the uh on the chapo election night dvd extras you will see the alternate universe of our ending where uh virgil declared uh it looks like hillary's gonna win and felix's jack d ripper character goes into the bathroom and shoots himself i was really going to kill myself though <laughs> if hillary wins so like you know hey silver lining uh um, you know, not because I don't want a woman to be president, but because it's part of the show. Like you have to be contiguous with the source material, and I had to die. So yeah, um, like I said, we're we're all living in the zone right now. Bill Mitchell is our dad, Mitchell. and and the fact that this this illusion was so widely shared uh, does not make um, the sting any less acute, uh, at least for me. I mean, we talked on this show so much about how Hillary had no appeal to basically any voter group. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And how her entire campaign was organized around uh, appealing to these like rich enclaves of moderate Republican suburbanites. Shout out Chuck like, Schumer. Right on Acres, Virginia and shit. Uh, and how she was totally ignoring the rest of the country. But... For me, I just felt like there was there was going to be such a thing as a negative mobilization that people were going to be so disgusted by the idea of this joker being president that they would vote against him. And I think we found out that's not how it works. No. People need someone no. to vote for. They're not going to vote against him. And you know what, what I what I and what I've been thinking about is like like I said this tug of war between like my rational the rational brain and like the kind of media super ego um, and like this kind of like Bill Mitchell, the gut instinct. And I, I, I the, the moment I think back to was our first night in Philadelphia covering the DNC when we were watching that horror show on television and we were sitting there in Nick's house. And uh, that was the first time like we're in my gut. I thought, holy shit, they're going to lose this election. Yeah. And then like but at little by little, I was able to sort of build a levy against that, you know, like I said, not unreasonably so considering, but like at the same time was a kind of uh, a bulwark against like the psych, the, you know, the psychic trauma of considering Trump being president or them losing it. And what made me feel that that first night watching the DNC is I was thinking like, OK, if I'm watching this, if I'm watching this right now and I'm a voter in any of those states that Hillary lost in the upper Midwest or Pennsylvania or Florida, regardless of you know, race, gender, et cetera, et cetera. 
if my life has been more precarious since 2008, if I'm worried about the future, what am I seeing here tonight? And what, what you saw was Donald Trump is a mean, rotten person and Hillary Clinton deserves to be president by, you know, just by virtue of her existence. That's it. You also saw their fight song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that... I, 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 I remember yesterday it occurred to me that I, I looked through my tweets and I found that in February I realized that is when I first had an inkling that this was could go wrong. And I tweeted, and it was when she had launched America is Already Great. Oh, yes. Oh, her to make America great again. And I tweeted, you know, America's already great. And a voter just thinking, I'm going to go with this guy. He might be a screaming orange lunatic, but he acknowledges there's a fucking problem. Yeah. And, and like, I just, yeah, I like everybody, I just convinced myself that polls meant things, that, uh, that campaign infrastructures mean things, and that, more importantly than anything, I think, that we all, or at least uh, a critical mass of Americans had an innate resistance to the idea that we should destroy all uh, barriers between entertainment and politics. Like, that's why we, I thought that, and I think most people thought that Trump lost the debates, is because he just seemed like a reality TV clown, and she seemed like a real politician. And I think we all assumed that people still wanted a real politician. But I think that's gone. I think, I think we were like basically the last people to realize that for the most people who watch 80 hours of television a, a week and who process everything through what they see on TV, that, that that barrier is non-existent and probably hasn't existed for years. No, the, the barrier is non-existent and a corollary to you know Donald Trump, our game show host president, I've 100% noticed on the other side among, among liberals now who all throughout the election and then now dealing with the trauma of facing up to the reality of it are once again retreating into fantasy and entertainment and pop culture. You know, I mean, like uh, all the Harry Potter shit, you know, like yeah. it's just like it's the same sort of retreat into kind of nostalgia and away from the grim realities of the world that um, enabled Donald Trump. And it's a hundred percent true uh, for liberals and Democrats as well. Yeah, it's like it's it's not one side. I mean, a lot of people who voted for Trump are like, "Hey, I saw him on TV. He seemed like a good businessman. He really, you know, he sure told uh, Meatloaf what was what." Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell the Ayatollahs. But just as the same thing, you had liberals create these fantasy worlds where, yes, they're they're fucking Dumbledore or whatever. Most I mean, it's like you think the people living in anything that you think be you think the real world. Do you think the adults who like uh, view the world and popular culture exclusively through entertainment designed for children? Do you think they're having a hard time understanding when that uh, a bad guy won? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's something I said to Felix maybe a week before, or not, actually a few days before the election when we were doing the predictions, and I said, you know, narratively, yeah, it, the only thing that makes sense here is him winning. That's the only correct conclusion for the past, you know, 16 months of this campaign. You know, uh, didn't we kind of presume that she would win, almost kind of based on another uh, medium for children, uh, uh, Aaron Sorkin, West Wing fantasy, yeah, yeah. that Americans would all come to their senses and say, we support the the principled politician, the one who's uh, who reached out to Henry Kissinger and all of this <laughs> shit. But really, we're better but, than Trump, America. Yeah, and we're not. No, we're, we're not. not. No, we're not uh, at but, all. But really, most people say, instead of going, look, don't. Let good be the don't let perfect be the enemy of good. And listen, you son of a bitch, Donald Trump and Mike Pence. If it's illegal to love a man, well, I love a man called the truth, and I su <laughs> I suck his fucking dick, and he comes in my face. You s bastard, son of a bitch, ignoramus. Mike but Pence, Mike Pence. What else will you electrocute? Will you electrocute the trade deficit? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There was so many per there was so many perfect fuck ups of this thing that mirrored the insanities of Clinton world. You had their obsession with mythical moderates. Uh, these people, these oh my deep God. state freaks, they love their mythical moderates, whether they are, you know, 
performing female genital mutilation or locking women in cages in Syria, these moderate rebels, or if they're, uh, you know, country club Republicans that they were vying for, who in the end told them to go fuck themselves because they wanted the real thing. They got fucked in the ass by their fake moderate. Yeah, no, can we talk about this for a second? Can we talk about that Chuck Schumer line? Because yeah, it's a, a stunning thing. example of, of m- malpractice. It's it's insane, and he's going to be the Senate Minority Leader. Matt, what did, yeah. quote it. He said, and I, I, this is very close to a direct quote, for every blue-collar vote we lose in Pennsylvania, we pick up two moderate Republican women in the Philly suburbs. And he, she got 7% of Republican voters, which means that she absolutely did not get those fucking uh, moderate Republican women. She just lost the blue collar voters. End of fucking story. Yeah, yeah. I, dude, like Chuck Schumer, like, uh, like he should be put to death. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. All these people, because that's what we need to be focused on. All these fucking libs are like, oh, the rising tide of fascism. Oh, I, now I know what it's like to live in 30s Germany. He lost by, it's looking like maybe 2 million votes. He got a. He did worse than McCain or Romney. He did not do well in yeah. terms of raw vote total. Yeah, th- this is this is the he most did important. Not win this election. She lost it through I- bad strategy, bad messaging, being a bad candidate. It was not won by Donald Trump, and that needs to be fucking emphasized yeah, no, th- because then they get off the fucking hook. Exactly. He was like the, he wasn't swept to power on some like huge outpouring of like white supremacy or you know Pepe's all coming out to vote. I feel like to, to quote, uh, to paraphrase uh, the great Herm Edwards, the Republican voter is who we thought they were. It's the same people yep. who voted for Romney. It's the same people who voted for McCain. Mm-hmm. Nobody voted for yeah. Clinton or not enough people did. Uh, as we said earlier, she thought that she was entitled to that Obama coalition just by virtue of her existence or being a woman or whatever, but offered them nothing. And they, no one vo- they didn't come out for her in the same numbers uh that they did for Obama that won him all those states twice. The yeah, uh, period. And that's it. That's it. You don't and have like, to worry And, and this is the Trump thing. Voters. This is the thing. Like, there weren't enough of them to win in any any election where you give a fucking opposition and you and give Matt, a positive fucking And Matt, you, you've, you've spoken about this too and I think it's also important. Like, There's a lot of talk now about oh, do we need to like reach out to Donald Trump supporters or whatever? It's like, no, fuck that. We need to reach out to the people fuck who that. don't vote. Who didn't vote? People who didn't Way show bigger up. pool of people. That's a way bigger pool of people, and it's a way more persuadable yes, group of there people. Were some, there were some people who voted for, for Trump who had voted for Obama twice. And an appeal, guess what? An appeal to the people who were unengaged and didn't show up this time, it'll pick them up by accident. You don't have to direct anything specifically to them. But I just think like we need to be. Yeah, like just be on the lookout now for like everybody who in their like post election analysis or post mortem or whatever is trying to play it off like this was inevitable or there was nothing that could have been done or that like America is just so irredeemably racist that as soon as they heard that dog whistle, it was just all over. Because like, I'm sorry, like that shit is as ignorant as like the most like baying moron who voted for Trump. Yeah, it's absolutely. not true. You listen, and these Andy people, Victor, you the, fucking giant sack of pudding. The, it's not you true. Turd. It's not true. And like the people who are saying it are covering their own ass, and they're they're basically trying to protect their careers, and they're just basically own psyche from the, like the damage of facing up to what they, happened. As was the story in the primaries, and like now it is the full story of the election. This campaign laid naked the total irrelevance of every single member of this media class of this journalist class who spent the past several months clapping each other on the back at how smart they were at uh making these appeals uh like you saw on saturday night live in that intro that people the last one before the election that people fucking said they cried at (sighs) where (sighs) alec baldwin and what's her name broke character yeah yeah and then yeah kate Kate McKinnon, mckinnon and then kate mckinnon says at the end you know I can't tell you who to vote for, but um, think about the country you want to live in. And it's like, fuck you. <laughs> like, like anyone, like anyone who doesn't have an Amazon wish list would heed those words. I mean, it, it's because it boils down to aesthetics. Because these people's lives are comfortable no matter what. So it boils down to their aesthetic horror at the idea of Trump being president, which will not get somebody off the couch who's living in a fucking shithole in the Midwest, who's all got, of like, these an oxycontin addicted. Uh, kid or whatever all of these their material conditions are not being appealed to Mm -hmm. all of these fucking sense of like 
sense of these abstract notions that have nothing to do with their lives because they have real fucking problems, unlike every dickhead in fucking Hollywood who's wringing their hands about what Sorry, this means about America. <laughs> Slight Hollywood digression. Uh, another added benefit of the election is that uh, Stephen Baldwin is now the most alpha Baldwin brother. He will be carving the Thanksgiving turkey yeah. this year. Alec, Alec and Will, Billy are his sons now. Well, Alec, just like we are Bill Mitchell's sons. Does, is, does Alec gonna keep playing fucking Trump? This awful, doing this awful. No, he's like, yeah, give it to give it to Anthony. For yeah, Bernie give it to Anthony. Trump. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, but uh, but uh, so like we, uh, you remember all these endorsements for Hillary Clinton, and then like some historic endorsements, and people like, oh my God, Variety endorsed her. <laughs> oh my God, the New Yorker endorsed her, and just all of this back clapping. And like all of it, all of it was ultimately just just terrifically meaningless. And uh, Matt, uh, you know, congruous with what you just said, people voted against a political, a media class. And all of the people covering their asses right now do not, cannot reckon with how much they are loathed. Yeah, it, they're just like absolutely. they are just like Hillary. They thought we have the right qualifications. We look at things the right way. We experience the world in the right way. Well, you would have to be totally discounted to not value our input. And it turns out, no, people hate you because you are backbiting, calculating, cowardly fucking weirdos yeah. who have no idea what the rest of the world is like. And it fucking showed. You know what? If you guys really thought you had any effect on this shit, the way that they aligned against Trump, he should have lost by 30 points. When, they were as important as they think they when are. When the Podesta emails came out and we saw the all right weirdos like making up like weird codes and like it just seemed like like uh, like schizophrenia or numerology and they're like oh yeah podesta's a satanist child molester and we thought like oh okay no sane person would believe this but now i'm like okay yeah probably <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah probably because these this is a class of sick depraved people the dnc are sick depraved people the ending to all this the ending to this night was just the perfect death to clintonism the most cinematic you know steven seagal killing the senator and hard to kill was <laughs> <laughs> perfectly symbolic thing i like to the, picture her like hearing that she lost and seeing watching you know dane county wisconsin come in and just like crying and like wobbling around yeah and, and then she vomits and she like falls into a broom closet and gets her head stuck in a bucket <laughs> it's the only thing it's good to is to think about hillary just having constant yeah just, like, pi just yeah picture her as like a clumsy french waiter they should really honestly they should really leave the country uh, yeah no they should because the way that they did it the way that it happened at the fucking javits center where this entitled fucking slob who could not even she offered minority voters nothing but to define herself by who she was not she couldn't even face them she couldn't even face and those people no. there those people that were crying they weren't even workers they were donors this fucking asshole brought all her donors to have a big party about how great they were and how they showed what kind of country they were you know, and she couldn't even fucking face them and not just that not just that that she couldn't face them she brought out John Podesta John this fucking, fucking cum eating freak to <laughs> lie to them to fucking multi. lie to them and while she stood in the fucking back because she's never been a fucking leader ever in her no. life. She is just somebody who has fans who are psychologically weak, tormented, elite freaks. Here's the thing. The, the, uh, the thing that, that, that really stands out in my head looking back on this election is something Amber told me on Tuesday night. And we talked about it again the other night. She couldn't even come out for a $15 an hour minimum wage. Her response to that was, how about $12.50? And like to me, that sums up everything. Like if you can't look at that square in the eye and realize how badly they fucked up, like what you you're offering people nothing. Twelve fifty an hour. That that was her response. Nothing. Not even a full throated defense of our entitlement programs. Yeah. yeah. Nothing of that. Like she could like. Okay, she sort of came out for like the the Bernie's college program. She could even come. No, she could have had a half-ass. It was a half-ass yeah, thing. No, like down. A, the thing. People are compulsive means testers. And after Everything after this, has to have a fucking means testing component to it. It has to have a fucking sliding scale and a goddamn T square that you have to apply to see what fucking trance you land on and what like level of subsidy you get. Nothing can be a universal fucking program, even though that's what people are able to get their fucking heads around and understand and get excited about mm -hmm. because they can fucking get it. 
they're means testers and they're grand bargainers. And thinking back on it, I thought, you know, all right, she like squeak by in this thing and her organization would power her through and she would just be a shitty president that we would all despise who would try to cut a deal with fucking Paul Ryan and the left has to stand up to her and just have just a, a stupid dysfunctional government for four years. Yeah. Now that's not the case though. And you know, it, it goes back to our DNC thing. In August, you know, after the DNC, what did they do? Well, they certainly didn't visit Wisconsin even once. They spent the entire summer reassuring Republican moderates, quote unquote, that they would govern in a way amenable to them. And guess what? They all voted for Trump. They're all. Because yeah. they're Republicans. They will stab yeah, you. Because they're not Democrats. <laughs> they, yeah, they hate you. They hate you and they'll stab you in your fucking back every chance they get. If you're a Republican, why are you voting for Hillary Clinton unless you're some fucking American Enterprise Institute pussy or David Frum? Yeah. Any of these. You know what? How much time? How much time? Do you think Hillary Clinton spent going around to, you know, like the King Solomon Institute for, you know, beheading your wife or the fucking Khan Institute for Middle East Freedom, <laughs> telling people she was going to depose Assad and how, you know, Jerusalem should be the capital, just like Trump says. How much time do you think she she spent reassuring the foreign policy ghouls? That she was going to enact a regime of pure evil as upon, as as opposed to Obama's mitigated evil, while spending and no time forget, on anything else. Uh, how much time she spent at massive, big dollar fundraisers with fucking Jimmy Buffett, crumping with fucking Paul McCartney. <laughs> yeah. whatever the hell she was doing. I, I just uh, <laughs> I, I I love I'm thinking Chuck Schumer. He's like, for every uh, blue collar white we lose in the Rust Belt, we'll pick up three David Frums in uh, <laughs> the Virginia. Uh, guess suburbs. what, David? Guess yeah. what? Guess what, Schumer? You fucking character. How many people do you think there are that make two hundred seventy five thousand dollars a year? It's not a lot, you fucking idiot. Very, Holy like, very shit. Lucille Bluth politics. Yes. Hey, and how about this? Remember giving a primetime speaking slot at the DNC to fucking Bloomberg? This fucking scolding, diminutive billionaire who's universally hated. Get, getting back to the the uh, the true and proper the true and proper uh, truth that uh, Bernie would have won. I did see yeah. that Michael Tomansky had a thing. He was like, well, you are forgetting that that would have triggered the Mike Bloomberg independent run. Fuck that. He still would have won. Yeah, still would have won. You know, no, and I got to say, I no, got, Bloomberg would have gotten like 5%. The most important thing. He would have gotten all these dipshit counties in, in like northern Virginia or whatever. Uh, but he wouldn't have won the. He would not have been a difference in like a Rust Belt state. You think he would have been the difference in Michigan or 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 Pennsylvania? Yeah. Or yeah. Well, kidding? hey, you know what? Uh, my kid just OD'd. Uh, I have to like borrow money to even get the doctor to cut my balls while I cough. But you know this diminutive guy who's screeching at me about Dr Pepper. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna vote for him over the guy who says that I I, I am entitled to basic human services. Yeah, and that's how things work. I Fuck do you, like Tomaski. The idea, though, of these people who fetishized uh, defeating Trump at all costs and why that made third party voters the devil, how they would have had to reconcile themselves to vote for Bernie to to stop Trump. Or otherwise, be like, you know what? Uh, no, I'd rather have I'd rather have Trump. Uh, yeah, no, but and they, they would have fallen in line man. because they're all sure. cowards. But all of them. The, here's the thing yeah. now. Saying that Bernie would have won is not like a gotcha. It's like not to be smug. It's like actually the most salient question going forward if you oppose Trump. And like, you know, you, yeah, you can always say yeah. like... There has to be a way forward. It, it, it can't be Clintonism. We have to know, and we know what would have worked. We what, state did, what states did he win in the fucking primary? All of the ones that she lost that were her firewall, that were like her safety net to like if she lost Florida and North Carolina. Trump won Michigan by 20,000 votes or so. I just found out that 90,000 people cast ballots in Michigan, voted for all of the down-ballot races, and left the president's blank. Jesus. They fucking hate her. <laughs> that would have happened well, with Bernie? Fuck you. You know, well, here's the thing, though. Like, I, if you're talking about who these people are, who, who really controls the Democratic Party, I think that they would... Uh, 
they made all these choices and they would make the same ones again because they'd rather lose than go in the direction of even mild social democracy. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, and, he, you know, and here, you know, here's the real reality, though. That wouldn't be possible if Bernie took it over. End of story. They would re- The iron law of institutions, it's called. I think Jonathan Schwartz uh, coined that term. Uh, it, 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 people would prefer to maintain a position within a institution with a, that is a loser and that is out of power than to see that institution succeed in a way that loses them personally. Absolutely. Power. And here and like and here and here and here's the the grim meat hook reality to to paraphrase the good doctor. Um we're now living in a decaying political system and empire controlled top to bottom by the hard hard right. And I'm sorry, the Democratic Party cannot and more importantly will not protect you from what's coming like if you voted for them or you're one of the people who feels afraid or unstable right now with good cause i i don't know what to tell you because like i i don't know who's there for you or to resist what's coming but it's not the democratic the party republicans are one state legislature away from being able to rewrite the constitution they're one state legislature away from having the three-fifths majority that could pass any constitutional And here's amendment. the thing. Come January, we're really going to see uh, how, like, you know, remember when Obama was elected in 2008? Probably with, like, the biggest actual mandate of any politician in my lifetime with the House and Senate. Absolutely. Uh, what did he get done? Nothing. Well, we're about to see how much can get done in the American political system quickly. With a smaller Senate. Yeah, yeah, negative two million votes. uh, It's it's pedal to the metal. And like, I mean, you're not going to believe what like the shit that they're going to get. done. There's going to be I mean, there's going to be some really fucked up shit. You it's as John Mitchell said in 1972, this country's going so far right. You're not going to be able to recognize. Yep. Labor is about to get fucked. So many people are about to get fucked. Waleed Ferris, who's an actual war criminal from Lebanese forces, one of the speechwriters and policy setters and uh, uh, trainers for the group of people that committed the massacres at Sabra and Shatila. He's basically writing the whole foreign policy thing. This psycho. When Republicans uh, get in power, they have this uncanny ability to actually pass policies that keep them in power, such as disenfranchisement, reducing early voting hours, you know, voter ID and things like that. When the Democrats had unitary government for two years and a uh, filibuster proof majority in the U.S. Senate, they couldn't pass card check. They didn't even try. Yeah. They didn't even try. They didn't, and they didn't now, give a and now, shit. And now all of the things that were like Obama's actual achievements, like his terrible health care plan, the totally weak Dodd-Frank bill, all that shit's going away immediately. And their policies and like the like any anything coming from a democratic, you know, government uh, 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 leadership at the top uh, that is going to protect people, such as a strong uh, civil rights division in the Justice Department is n- predicated on the notion that, uh, oh, we'll just continue to be president. And this right, won't stop right, right. because Republicans are so dumb. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who lost all these state legislatures that portended just the raft of horrors that would uh, fall upon the people that she doesn't give a shit about, and the, her type of people, is, her type of person, does not give a shit about. The no one even thought to fire her after all that. No one even thought that. The thing that got her fired was in the end that somebody leaked an email of her looking for Hamilton tickets. And they replaced her with someone who was even more culpable in the corruption that was happened and and the and the behind the scenes rigging for Hillary that happened during the, the, the primaries, who literally leaked fucking debate questions to Hillary. This is Clinton Donna Brazil, right? This is why saying Bernie is right isn't gloating and it's not scoring points. It's the central fact, it's the central reality that you have to face. All of these people in the Democratic Party need to be purged immediately. And here's the thing. I don't even want to get involved in like, you know, rooting for Keith Ellison to be the DNC chair. I'm sure he's a decent guy. He's probably the person I would choose. But the Democratic Party is a Democratic Party. It doesn't matter. They're not changing. A leopard can't change its stripes or spots rather. And um, we know what they're going to do. They're going to collaborate with this evil. And the next presidential candidate they run is going to be even more to the right than Hillary is. So like, I I don't know, like there's no... 
like fixing or tweaking like the DNC or the Democratic Party, even though rightly, if I they were a serious you, party, all thinking that Cory Booker is going to save the day. If they were a serious Ugh. party, everyone in a position of leadership or authority should either have turned in their resignations on Wednesday or hmm. fucking kill themselves. Now, nah, fuck that. Yeah, they should have spilled their guts on the <laughs> yeah. pavement. In, a, in any kind of rational system, these people would all be led into a tiled basement <laughs> room with a fucking drain on the floor. <laughs> well, well I'm not, I, I can't say I share your pessimism necessarily because uh, looking back on the primaries this year, I thought there was there was this this ahistorical aberration. It wasn't Trump. It was Hillary Clinton. And that, you know, when you look at... Uh, currents in history that it they don't presuppose that this uh, wife of a former president who has this party in her uh, in her thrall would just be plopped into it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I look. I want to. Yeah, I I gotta disagree with uh, Will here. I'm more agree with Virgil. I think there are some signs of hope. I think. I've been pleasantly surprised by some of the uh, libs and centrists in my life who have come to me and said, you were fucking right. I was wrong. My, you know. Iglesias said it. Yeah. Torre said it. Brianna Wu. Brianna one of the Wu dumbest said people alive. And, <laughs> yeah, but, it, uh, but okay, like you have that. But at the same time, you have these shitheads who spent the entire primary arguing about how uh, Bernie Sanders was the candidate of racist dude bros, now saying that he was too much of a POC yeah. to get elected. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great line, by the yeah. way. These people will say anything. I like how Bernie uh, basically has now morphed from being just another old white man in the establishment to uh, Tevi. I mean, my gut, my, my darkest gut feeling is that Will is right and the Democrats are irredeemable, which... I mean, as cathartic as that is to say, is also terrifying. Because there's, no, because yeah, there's really nothing, nothing stopping anything else. else. Yeah. To take up the job of fucking opposing these monsters. Well, you have... Well, uh, you, but you, the only way to see is what what happens in the next couple of months. Are these fuckers purged? Yeah. Is there a genuine movement? I think there are some, the some tentative early signs that maybe the tail... Can we can't have tentative early anything, though. This can't be like pussyfooting and half-measure shit, or they're just... The, fuck you! They're gonna go back to requiring a goddamn deed to vote within two years if that's the case, and then nothing will matter because you won't even be able to fucking stop it at the ballot box. Well, I mean, the one sign that's encouraging is uh, you have Keith Ellison, this candidate for the DNC chairmanship, who is endorsed by both Bernie Sanders and and Chuck, yeah, Schumer, Chuck Schumer, which is in, which exactly. indicates to me how much of a threat is it to those fucking monsters if Chuck fucking Schumer is endorsed? Yeah. Because yeah. Oh, no, I yeah. read it, I read it a different way, and that Chuck Schumer has never had any particular values, and now he looks at this and what? thinks no, like, he does. no, I, I'm, he loves Wall Street. He wants to suck the dicks of. Golden I don't think that's that. a value. I think that's just what he does to stay in power because he is a very cheap politician. Yeah. yeah the right. cheapest guy. He's, and that's not an anti-Semitic thing. <laughs> I mean, for me it is, but I can do it. I can <laughs> yep, do it. Yep. I don't know. Chapa Trappas is if not anti-Semitic. Major, if that guy's a minority leader, even with Keith Ellison at the DNC, I don't fucking know how much progress that is. If Chuck fucking Schumer... I don't know. I, I'm I'm encouraged by the widespread uh, sentiment that Clintonism has failed. Yeah, there are a lot of fucking turds we need to flush out of the bowl. Absolutely. I totally agree. But I'm not right, quite ready to say it's totally hopeless yet. Oh, Jesus. And I mean, what, what encourages me about it yeah. is a lot of these people are looking at this rationally and they're saying, um, well, God, I think we are bereft of ideas, so let's just try this. I'm and if that's the best we can get, I'll take it. I'm more pessimistic, but I mean, I'm encouraged because, you know, the old cliche, the choice is either socialism or barbarism is now true. And we're going to find out what barbarism looks like. Um, can I just can I say a quote from a movie that changed my life? Go for it. Uh, this is from D Dark Batman, Dark Batman Rises. It's a Christopher <laughs> Nolan movie and it came out in 2008 after the Bush years. It's always darkest before the morning. <laughs> he said that after he, he after the Joker made him solve a Rubik's cube. That if he didn't do it, it would cut off his girlfriend's head. <laughs> okay. Wait, also, let me just say really quick. Um, has anyone thought maybe Donald Trump is kind of like the Joker in these oh, films wow, yeah. okay. because of how you know, twisted he is? And Here, okay. Keith Ellison's Batman. All right, all right. That that's the darkness. Right, and it's it's fucking bleak, and I'm I'm glad that that we're still here and talking to you, and you know I think because all we got is each other, right? At least that's my optimistic. Yeah, I've been However, can we talk 
about the brightness, or at least the funny side, which is Donald Trump's actual cabinet and administration. Can, can we talk about how like he met Obama once, and he's like, "I like Obamacare. It's great." <laughs> like he's literally <laughs> a, a retarded child, a and the last person he talks I, to. I, I, I need, I'm going to put him. this marker down. I'm I'm going to put this marker down, knowing full well that I've already been made a fool of predicting anything with any confidence about Donald Trump. Early 2017, he's going to get on TV and go, folks, I've never been a politician. I'm a deal maker. I love deals. I love businesses. It's time for the next deal. Mike Prince is your president now. Oh, my God. I, I seriously, I, I, it, I, better than 90%. Well, did you see that shit about how he's like, he wants to be able to go home on the way? <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be able to fly to Trump Tower and stay in his house on the weekends. He's a fucking child. That's a big part of He's reason why people toddler. voted for him over Hillary Clinton. Because you, like any right-minded person, looks at Hillary Clinton and it's like, oh, this is just like a shitty boss who's going to yes. me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Look yeah. at Donald Trump, who's like this fucking cool boss, who's like doesn't give a shit if you like come in hungover on fucking Monday he's morning. Playing golf every other yeah, day. Yeah, he's like gone not even in the, of office. the time. And yeah. it's like, yeah, there's no rules anymore. Yeah, you're not even sure what you do. Like your title is like branding executive. <laughs> <laughs> but all you do is play solitaire on your computer and like take take nips out of the bo bottle you keep under your desk. Hillary Clinton is the boss that's like emailing and texting you on the weekend about like why haven't you answered this Hillary email Clinton, or whatever. Hillary Clinton actually is Steve Carell from The Office, like when he would put on the Kangle hat because <laughs> like that's what she was in 2008 when she went to the church and she she went. I ain't in no way tired. <laughs> because no. we got to read the emails and we got to see like how these sick, depraved people operate. And it's like, God, what a terrible place to work. No, <laughs> Who wants that? Who but, wants but, to be involved? But, but seriously, though, if you saw those pictures of Trump meeting with Obama in the Oval Office from this week, he looked like a husk. Yeah. He did not look like a man who was like, we did it. I'm here. It's the White House, baby. Yeah. He looked like a guy who was scared that's, that's, shitless. That's, that's what really makes me sick and terrified because if the idea of like dipshit Donald Trump just kind of improvising for four years, frankly, it might not be the worst thing. As I've said repeatedly, if somebody, if a smart, enterprising young Democrat presented him with a single payer proposal and called it Trump care, <laughs> yeah, dude, fuck that, fuck that. If so, but if he's if he's that disengaged. Then th it's all just going to be every monstrous scumbag Republican just running in his stead, like George W. Bush. He's just going to check out and tweet, and these monsters are going to run everything. No, he, and that's he, the worst. Possible but like he has scenario. the perfect out. The last person, it's always Trump can just be influenced by talking to one person that he likes. So, like you said, he just met with Obama. He's like <laughs> literally a fucking child. He's an idiot. Yeah. Uh, because Obama but was that's polite what he to said him. About George W. Bush. Yeah. And Reagan, yeah. they said, uh, all the stories about those White Houses said the last guy to get in the room with him once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we... And I, that's just what's going to be again. Just putting this out there. I, I, and who's going to be in the room with this fucking... Do we know oh, anyone monsters, who can monsters. like just be friends with Donald Trump? Like, I know Dana Schwartz still gets paid by his fucking sick son-in-law. <laughs> yeah. like, can, like, can she like go up to, like through that ladder and just be there? Or, yeah, or yeah, Bill Mitchell, we thought, you know, Trump would really like get a kick out. Brainwash Bill Mitchell, and we're going to convert <laughs> Trump to Shia Islam. <laughs> Well, <laughs> folks, the occultation of the Mahdi. Folks, coming back, you're going to be so sick of seeing the hidden Mahdi, you wish he would disappear again. <laughs> Fo folks, this guy, Ali, the best. He's a martyr. He's a martyr, folks. He's the true heir to the prophet. Abu Bakar. It's obvious. It? Abu Bakar is a loser. <laughs> Like, if, like, I saw this thing about, okay, so Michael Flynn, one of the top psychos from Team Trump. Dude, he wants to extradite he wants Gulan. He wants to extradite Gulan. And I was just thinking about AKP Trump all day. Oh, like, that was, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> folks, folks, Gulan is a traitor. I, Hungary is Turkey. <laughs> folks, Vienna is Turkey. <laughs> How stupid are we that we gave up the Balkans? <laughs> How about this? How about I take your biggest sons and I make them Janissaries? <laughs> Does that sound good, folks? But but, but look, there, we we have to enjoy now the small pleasures, and and for me, the small pleasures in the larger horror is Secretary of Education Ben Carson. 
with can, delight. Can I, can I do Secretary of State Newt Gingrich? Yeah, no. Oh, wait, we have uh, sec- soon to be Secretary of Education Ben Carson on the line. Uh, ben, what what is what are schools going to look like in Trump's America? You know, the inside of the school is not supposed to look like a playground. The playground is on the outside. <laughs> and we talk a lot about the common core. But to me, it's like an apple core. <laughs> but you took out the seeds, so nothing is planting in their minds. And it's <laughs> it's like you go to the apple, apple farm, and there are no apples. And you go, what do I pick out of the tree? And you just... Uh, pick leaves and <laughs> that is why I hate being politically correct <laughs> uh, Secretary of State Newt Gingrich uh, I assume Sarah Palin will have some oh, yeah, position yeah. of prominence um, Secretary of Energy that's what I heard yeah. AG yeah. Ru- drill every circus surface of the earth Attorney General Rudy Giuliani it's oh, like God. these people yeah. who are like just has-beens like and now they're now they got the world so yeah, it's, like, it's no it's it's straight up the cabinet from a teacot meme from 2010 yeah it, exactly and, I, and, and what yours is funny is like if you if you look at the broader election as like the slobs for snobs and the snobs lost, even within the Republican Party, like their snobs lost, and the Trump cabinet is just the Republican Party slobs. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. It's like yeah. you know, like they're all the people like the, the weird kind of like East Coast Republicans who are just like you know the Chris Christies of the world. Oh, he's probably now on the outside looking in too. Oh, but. poor Chris. He gambled it all on this, and he still fucked it up. Yeah, because, what happened? Yeah. He, what? I, why, why isn't he like getting his ticket punched? Because he like threw. A- I think it's because they they think he still might get indicted. So what? They can the stop that. Really There's no rules you. anymore. They can just pardon him. Yeah, yeah. just pardon him. Yeah. I you imagine fucking fat doofus Christie as attorney general, and he just starts prosecuting uh, Jets fans. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, I, no, I still, I still don't understand. Like, like the the the, the rationale behind sidelining Christie is like, oh God, we can't. Donald Trump can't have a fucking scandal on his. Head. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, look. The administration headed by the rapist guy is petty. Like he didn't bring the nuggets when he when he <laughs> his most recent McDonald's order or something. Like it's like where's Chris? Chris nuggets? What about the nuggets? I said I want the Big Mac, but I wanted the nuggets too. Ten piece. Chris, where are they? Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. Chris, can you read this? Can you you're read fired. this? Can you Chris, read what it says here fired. on the side of this package? It says ten. Ten pieces, Chris. I only see seven here. What <laughs> happened, Chris? What happened? What's that on your lips? Oh my God, Newt Gingrich, Secretary of State. Holy yeah, why not? Yeah, why not, dude? Why but not? This guy yeah. spent the past ten years writing inane fucking alternate history novels. Like his brain is just stupid. <laughs> imagine, yeah, imagine this like fucking chubby nerd going to Pakistan and meeting with these ISI psychopaths, and he's like. Ah, I've said it before, but the the females of Pakistan are uh, a delectable beauty. Uh, <laughs> picture, if you will, a world where uh, the Soviet Union won in Afghanistan, and therefore the Taliban never took power, and television was different in that era. Oh, oh uh, Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, I actually wrote an alternative history book where uh, you actually start becoming a gamer. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I don't know why I made him sound sh- like that. Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Homeland Security. Uh, no, it's not. I, I don't, don't think know, that's gonna though. happen. It's yeah. Gonna joke. It's gonna be Sheriff Clark. Arpaio's too old, and he actually might go to jail. Oh, oh Sheriff I'd Clark. It's gonna be Sheriff. Clark. Oh, he's another gem. And he's gonna wear that fucking cowboy hat the whole time. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, holy Plus, Christ! Plus, that's diversity, baby. He's black. Well, who says I'm not diverse? I, I respect diversity. No one respects diversity. Oh, you know what's funny? You know what's funny though? A hat at Homeland Security. You know what's funny though? Him putting David Clark up to prove he's not racist is like pretty much the same as Hillary like going to be like having Beyonce on stage and being like black people vote for me. <laughs> it's like the same shit. Uh, uh, Pusha T didn't get her Virginia. Yeah. Uh, Pusher Tim, <laughs> uh, uh, Joseph Badass, uh, <laughs> all the guys, Killer Mike. Well, Killer Michael didn't come around. No, I think Killer, Killer Michael no, no. screwed her. We should lay this at Killer no, Michael's I, I hands. I lay the blame for... squarely at Killer Michael. Just, Killer Michael know. screwed yeah. us, man. Uh, and uh, well, you know, also looking back on it, I want to say that uh, I thought that the big inflection point of the campaign, or at least something I just keep thinking for the past several days, is that that second debate when Donald Trump, obviously on the back foot because the Access Hollywood video has just come out and his poll numbers are tanking, uh, says, "You know, I might put you in, uh, I might put you in prison." <laughs> and the 
audience there applauded. <laughs> yeah, the but every single lanyard, beltway, dipshit was like, oh my god, this is a banana republic. <laughs> and, but this is something that actually gives me hope for this country is that a super majority of this country agrees with me that Hillary Clinton should be in prison. Uh, yeah, 60% yeah, yeah. of this country. Yeah, if he actually goes through with it and puts her in jail, then I got I to gotta say, I'm going to give him points on yeah. that. So uh, then I, then I, he's I'm worth voting, a shot. Yeah, I'm voting to his 2020 victory fund. when he. I'm going like, to donate re- money to the North Carolina GOP. <laughs> imagine That lady walking her dog should have put her under citizen's yeah. arrest. Imagine, imagine, like, <laughs> imagine Hillary Clinton like in Oz. She's like going to the commissary. Hillary Clinton posting like uh, the prison memes about all the different ways you can make ramen noodles into like an a, a omelet or something. Yo, dude, that's that's how she's gonna do it. That she's gonna be like Eugene Debs and run from prison because <laughs> prison will actually make her cool. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Then she'll be relatable. No, because she'll just do a bunch of orange is the new black. <laughs> a show yeah. that basically nobody in America has seen except for assholes in New York. And yeah. Well, sadly, I don't think Donald Trump will keep his promises, which is which is a fucking shame because he should have his feet held to the fire on that. Yeah. But uh, one thing that does kind of give me just not really solace, but just like is amusing to think about is the fact that Hillary Clinton, this woman who spent two years, two years of her life doing the thing she fucking hates the most, campaigning, having to fucking grin and bear it, wake up every fucking morning, hold her asshole clenched shut, and then go in front of people, go on the Ellen show and do the dabs, and plaster this fake fucking smile to base and humiliate herself through the fucking vines and the Snapchats, just for the opportunity, maybe, that, uh, yeah, I'll be president and accomplish uh, nothing because I have no intent. <laughs> And then she loses to a guy who was not even really trying and didn't really want to win. Matt, Matt, I keep thinking about what you said when you were at my place and we were ordering sandwiches. And like, what kind? The, uh, Matt got Matt got a uh, pastrami. Uh, I got Nick turkey, and I had a uh, gabagool. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Matt just like no one had said anything in like five minutes, and Matt just said, "This is like a." fucking grimace was president <laughs> it was like the funniest thing i heard that entire day it was so fucking no, I good mean, that's the thing it's like i thought we still thought the tell that entertainment and politics were different and you know what the last 40 fucking years has been a slow and steady destruction of that idea i'm just late to the party on it and as much as i'm sure bernie would have beat trump I am a hundred percent metaphysically certain that oprah winfrey would have <laughs> i mean can you argue that point dude the Oprah would have killed the him. Democrats. They do in 2020. They'd have a much better shot with fucking Oprah than Cory Booker Absolutely. or Evan Bayh or any like, of these other people fucking. People are making fun dishes. of Michael Moore, and of course, because he's Michael Moore, for saying that more celebrities should run. He's right. He's dead right. Yeah, he's totally right. He was these dead, 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 fucking dead Democrats right. Democrats still are holding on to this idea that politics is a serious business, and it's vaguely unseemly to have po- uh, dem- uh, to do anything with celebrities other than just have them endorse you no they should be running they have a brand that's separate from the shitty worthless fucking asshole uh democrat brand which at this point is just like moral scolding and uh exporting jobs Matt clooney wants to run for senate clooney run for senate do it it's celebs get the celebs running who was it they want to do they want to do ashley judd a while ago that, that would have been crushed. a good yeah, idea actually if she didn't do it Mistake. She might have won. Uh, and then you got then. She's not a big enough star anymore, though. They need to be bigger uh, stars. How about uh, how about fucking uh, who's who's the girl on the show Bones? <laughs> What's Bones? Bones yeah, is Emily like Deschanel. yeah. That's, the Bones that's is about like this sister. spectrum chick who's like uh, solves crimes. But the bone crimes. Yeah, bone crimes. Yeah, bone, <laughs> I, uh, well, here's the, yeah Emily Deschanel. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Okay. Well, oh yeah. Yeah. No, she's Zoe Deschanel's sister. How about Deschanel sisters? That Deschanel, Deschanel, twenty twenty. Yeah, no, why not? <laughs> why not? No, because like makes sense. you get both all the demographics. You get the millennials with Zoe, and then you get all the old fucking uh, boomers who watch network television for the other. What if one. we just run? It's what perfect. if we just run the entire cast of Boston Legal? <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Oh uh, man, uh, Scott Bak? No, CSI. Scott Bakula. Yeah. CSI yeah. New Orleans. Hell yeah. CSI New York. Wait, Gary Sinise is a Republican, though. That's true. That's so true. He, he's probably well. He'd be like he'd be like in the Bloomberg 
Bloomberg faction. Yeah. Uh, we could. How about? Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of the best. You know. You know who it ends up being. Uh, it ends up being the people who are just kind of loudmouth and they're already on Twitter and they're just like kind of like uh, you know they're they're already these like libs who are like uh, like what's like what's his name the um, the rat tattooy guy. Oh, Pat Oswalt. Yeah, it would be like Pat Oswalt. Like, why, why not me? Why shouldn't I just do it? How about well, yo, I don't know why I make that voice for. It's gonna be Deborah Messing. She's gonna be like, I know how much you guys loved Will and Grace, but I'm entering the White House uh, with your Will and Grace. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like I said, um, I want to thank again uh, everyone who came to the live show. It was a surreal experience. I want to thank James Adomian again Hell yeah. for thank showing you, up. That was awesome. It was awesome. That was so and cool. He said he wants to do the show more, which is awesome. Hell yeah. His, his, his stuff is always amazing. We yeah. love James. And again, uh, thanks to Tim Faust uh, for taking care of all the t shirts. Uh, Patty Moe and Brandy Jensen also helped him out. That was really cool. And again, uh, thanks to Virgil and the boys because, uh, look, it was a. Uh, it was a great show, but it was very bizarre. And this I don't think it would have worked yeah. with anyone else uh, being up there. Will, do you mind if I just say something? Uh, something yeah, that's go just for been it. on my mind for a while. You know, obviously, like uh, this was this was a very fun conversation that I just had with you guys. And obviously, we couldn't touch on uh, every single issue. And uh, I think we, we avoided some of, the, some of the darker things that are enveloping this country right now. And uh, I think it's, it's correct and good that we're channeling our rage at this professional class of people who have lied to us over and over again and let us down over and over again. And most importantly, let down black and brown kids and queer kids and uh, the people who are really going to suffer in this country. And uh, regarding uh, this program and uh, our work as you know, creative people and writers and so on going forward, I think we are in a new era and politics is now an endless thing in our lives and it will transform our art and creativity from top to bottom, our entire culture. And I think one thing that everyone should keep in mind is that fascism seeks to destroy nuance and symbolism and yes, irony. And it seeks to sap, of a, sap us of our rationality and the art that makes us human and nourishes us and it is going forward is not something that we should abandon and i i as a chapo listener and collaborator i deeply admire what you guys do and uh, i think a lot of people do as well and i think for the next four years people are, are really uh going to need you guys so that they know that they're not alone so uh well, thank you guys that's uh very humbling to hear um but that's the plan you know yep uh to paraphrase samuel beckett i can't go on we will go on uh i can't go on <laughs> we will go on dc we're gonna be there fuck you guys <laughs> no uh yeah again thanks to all the chapo fans all the listeners everyone who came out to the show to my to my co-hosts and Brendan, uh, we live in the zone now, but we're still going to be funny, and we're st- obviously the show is still going to be the show, and I, I hope you'll uh, still be there with us. Everybody Cheers, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Do your Bye. Thing. Everybody get on the floor. Do your thing.